Hey everyone. Um, I guess for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm just some guy who um, uh, I like to teach theology and apologetics on the internet. Um, I pass some online courses in biblical studies and um, I have been studying the Bible for years now and so on and so like I said I just like to uh, uh, recommend good books on defending the Christian faith um, teach God's Word I, that's what I enjoy doing so anyway I wanted to uh, talk about something today that I've talked about numerous times before um, in the Bible, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, uh, See to it that there is no one who takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception in accordance with human tradition, in accordance with the elementary principles of the world, rather than accordance with Christ. So we know by God's word that anything, any philosophy that teaches anything contrary to what God's word teaches, it's automatically wrong. And which leads me to want to talk about something that has infected the world and infected the church. And it's called critical race theory. There's wokeness, intersectionality. Um, the premise of this philosophy of, crit of critical race theory, wokeness, is based on racism. Okay? The, the premise of it, it's based on the assumption, the assertion that all white people are racist, which is wrong. Um... And if you're black, you can't be racist because you weren't part of a power structure capable of oppressing people. Uh, that's lies. Um, to tell one group of people that they can't commit a sin that the Bible says is sin is automatically wrong. Um, the premise of this philosophy is based on redefining definitions of words, okay? They redefine words to control the narrative. And um, you're redefining things and giving modern terminology, changing what words mean to give legs to this um, awful, this evil new philosophy that's creating a lot of racism. Um, we have to understand something here. And remember, no one that was a slave, all of us have sin, according to God. James 2.10, if we break one of God's commands, then we're guilty of the whole law. So no one, including anyone that was a slave, were ever innocent before God. There's this way of thought now that, that says that um, even men like Jonathan Edwards, who were famous pastors, uh, men of God in the past, um, that they couldn't have been Christians because they owned slaves. And they're not understanding the uh, context of the situation. Um, in the Bible, uh, Paul told Philemon uh, to treat Onis Onis bleh, sorry, Onesimus more than a slave, but as a beloved brother. Okay, so this is the scripture. Um, obviously a real Christian back then in that historical context when slavery was legal, which I'm, I'm saying right off the bat that racial slavery is wrong and it's sin to look at one color of a people and think that, that one color is better than the other. That's what racism really is, not the modern definition that critical race theory redefines things. But, um, you have to understand that it was a different time, and um, we never lived in a perfect world. And 
there were Christians who, yes, owned slaves, and um, they gave the real Christians uh, treated their slaves right if they were real Christians. They would actually, uh, Jesus commanded people to love one another. So um, these people would, uh, we, we, I mean, we look at Bible times and we see that God had laws for slavery. And remember, no one that were under these slavery laws were innocent people. So that's another um, uh, error in uh, the argumentation of the left. To assume that, um, now I'm talking about biblical slavery, there's different kinds of that even, uh, under the theocracy of Moses or anyone who was a slave. Um, none of these people were not innocent. Um, since we all have sin, we all deserve the wrath of God according to God's word. So if he gives us anything less than this, uh, he's giving us less than what we deserve. From a biblical worldview point of view. Um, so Christians who did own slaves um, were commanded by God's word to treat them right. And it's so ridiculous. Um, I did a video on uh, slavery reparations. And really, I mean, there are people of all colors living off the government on welfare and so on and people want to talk about slavery reparations this is uh the left has made um racism this the the, the unforgivable sin not it is sin real racism is sin but they're you know they use it for their own agendas and they're they like i said they twist definitions of um they change definitions of words uh people we're all, all bent out of shape because of this politically charged racial climate that we live in about Kamala Harris being called a Jezebel. Well, she is a Jezebel in that biblical sense. Um, she is a Jezebel. She is for abortion, killing babies. She wants the whole country to look like California. If, you know, if people knew who God really is, um, they would stop making the Bible their personal play toy. If you actually know who Jesus really is, and Jesus is God, um, in Matthew 5, 29 to 30, Jesus said, If your right eye is causing you to sin, tear it out and throw it away from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away from, from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. So, unfortunately, people uh, don't take God's word serious and don't know the level of God's, they have no idea of the level of God's holiness and so people, they, instead of doing exegesis, they do eisegesis. They take modern ideas and they try to read that back into the text of Scripture. And when you do that, you're twisting God's word and you're trying to make it your personal play toy to just fit in whatever uh, modern philosophy or agenda is um, popular in, in whatever time you're living in, I suppose. But we need to look at the examples in Scripture. We need to look at the examples in Scripture, what God has given us, to understand His character, His holiness, His wrath, because uh, He's serious about these things, God. There are so many examples. Look at the story of King, <clears throat> King Jehu. Um, God anointed King Jehu king and to bring he anointed him to bring judgment on the house of ahab in um second kings chapter 9 verses 6 to 8 um jehu um, carried out assassinations he has jezebel thrown out her out of her window um jehu sent letters to the guardians of ahab's sons intimidating them 
and has them decapit he has them decapitate Ahab's sons in 2 Kings 10, 6 to 8. Um, then Jehu pretends he wanted to have a Baal worship service and got the Baal worshipers together. But then Jehu had his army go in there and kill them all. And after all that, now if you, Je, uh, Baal was a, a cult, they murdered babies, um, you know, like Planned Parenthood today, but in a, for the God of convenience, um, it's being done now for the God of convenience. But anyway, <clears throat> after all those things that Jehu did, um, in 2 Kings 10.30, after all those things, that those assassinations and all those things that King Jehu did, it says, The Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in executing what is right in my eyes and have done to the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart. Did you catch that? God said, because you have done well in executing what is right in my eyes and have done to the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, your sons and the fourth generation shall, shall sit on the thrones of Israel. So you could go to 2 Kings chapters 9 and 10 to see all that. Um, that's the real God of the Bible. That's how serious God is. Um, how much he hates sin. If you read the lives of Jezebel and uh, Ahab, you'll see that they were um, horrible people. And so <clears throat> that's the real God of the Bible. Um, we have some, we have examples of, um, uh, there was a woman in the book of Revelation chapter two, a woman that was causing sin in the early church. Jesus threatened that he would make her sick and kill her children unless she repents in Revelation chapter 2, verses 20 to 23. Because remember, Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I command you. We have to get this out of our mind. Uh, I did videos. Uh, so many people misunderstand John 3, 16. Um, the truth is, uh, look at Romans 9, 13. God said, Esau I hated okay Esau I hated that's what God God does not love everyone okay so he's he's not the Santa Claus in Leviticus 20 23 in reference to nations committing various sins God said I have abhorred them that's what God said I have abhorred them and you could look at the list in Leviticus 20 God gives a list of sins um, that the nations were committing um, killing their babies, the equivalent of, you know, abortion today. Um, we also see um, in verse 13, Leviticus 20, homosexuality is mentioned. And yes, homosexuality is sin that leads to hell. Um, Old and New Testaments condemn homosexuality. There's a really good book against the revisionist arguments that try to um, justify it. The, remember, the Bible warns about false teachers of the church. Uh, the same-sex controversy, um, Dr. James White and Jeff, Pastor Jeffrey D. D. Neal. Um, really good book, um, and it will sh show you from the uh, original language. Uh, for instance, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, Arsenokoites. In the Greek, it's being specific. It's, it's very clear what men do with men in bed in the original Greek language. That's why some modern translations just... Um, use the word homosexual because you know, it's a translation, but it's clear in the original language. But that's a really good book. Um, I always like to recommend books in my videos. If you want a really good book that can teach you to do Christian apologetics, defending the Christian faith like we're commanded to do, um, Always Ready by Greg Bonson. It's a really good book right here. But <clears throat> I know I, w I went off on a rabbit trail. And... Um, we have to put ourselves in the shoes and I'm, I'm, the, I'm going to be, you know, racism is wrong. Racial slavery. Um, it was wrong. It was evil, but that was what the world 
Um, that was the norm of the day. And um, Christians who had slaves, um, uh, there, were, there were real Christians who actually had slaves. And were they real Christians? Were they really saved? Well, according to God's word, a uh, book of, uh, you know, uh, Philemon, um, yes, the answer is yes. And But the, these Christians were uh, commanded to treat them as a beloved brother. Okay? It was a different time. It was unfortunate that that happened. It's, I, I, I would denounce uh, 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 racism is wrong. And um, what happened in America, it was very wrong. I mean, the Supreme Court in the late 1800s ruled that black people weren't human beings. That was horrific. Um, to take scriptures on slavery from the Bible, to try to support what happened in America with racial slavery is to take those verses out of context. And I um, demonstrated that in, a few years ago in a short video, not too th uh, deep, but it was um, the, the scriptures that were used to support um, racial slavery in America in the past. Um, the, the scriptures that were used to support that were taken out of context. Um, we, uh, the Bible teaches that racism is sin. Um, we know that in Acts 10, God told Peter that he should call no man unclean. Um, we know in Galatians 3, 28, it says there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So um, there's numerous places that you can go in the Bible that clearly show that um, racial slavery, uh, it was wrong. It was sin. Uh, racism is sin. The, the biblical definition, the, not what it was changed to because people want to promote um, division and um, critical race theory, like we're seeing now. Um, that's the twisted, uh, fake meaning, really. And uh, were these Christians perfect? Um, no Christ The Bible teaches that no Christian is perfect. Okay? There's, the, there's no Christian who ever lived who led a perfect life. And unfortunately, there was a system of slavery it was there, and it was the norm of the day. And um, the real Christians, who were really Christians, would treat their slaves like a beloved brother and not in the, 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 um, the horrific uh, way that we see in um, you know, movies, um, very good movies like Roots. And um, so uh, the Bible commands us to love one another and to not look at um, another color or race of people like um, one is better than the other. Because whether the person, whether it's within a Christian context or whether it's a non-Christian context, um, we're all made in the image of God, so there's not one color or one race that's actually better than the other. And it's, it's, we need to um, make that clear. Because the ridiculousness of um, the day that we live in, um, the left um, labels every Republican as racist, which is such a... Um, the, the level of straw man is just, it's so off the charts, it's, it's mind-blowing. Um, sorry, but um, n by far not every Republican is racist. Um, but if you're a Democrat and you're voting Democrat, 
I don't care if you say, well, I, I'm Democrat, but I don't believe in all the ideologies that Democrats believe. If you're voting Democrat, then you're voting to help laws still be in effect that make it legally that make it legal for people to legally murder babies. And it's unfortunate because um, the Democratic Party in reality is one of the worst enemies to um, African -Amer American black people. It, the statistics have said that 65% um, of babies who are murdered, killed in abortions, 65% of them are black. So um, the Democratic Party hypocritically uh, denounces racism and screams about racism. They're obsessed with it. They see racism in everything. It's, it's really extremely imbalanced. But they're helping to keep it legal for you know, all those babies to uh, be murdered in the womb. If you're a Democrat, you're also voting for the party that wants to make it uh, where young kids, um, if they want to transition and if they want to transition, the schools will support the kids and not tell the family. Um, the Democratic Party has become antichrist to the absolute core of its being. Believe me, I know that the Republican Party has its problems. But when a Christian votes, <clears throat> remember King Cyrus in the scriptures that God used to free the Jewish people, put him in power. King Cyrus was not by far innocent. And so um, it's it's ideologies, but it's really a matter of worldview. And if you are a real Christian, and I said this many times, um, having a biblical worldview is that you look at everything through the lens of what the Bible says. So a Christian, a real Christian being consistent has no choice that all of our actions are guided by our theology. And since voting has to do with moral issues that the Bible addresses, that's why a real Christian being consistent with the scriptures will bring their theology in the voting booths. Because a real Christian Voting for abortion, murdering, killing babies? Mm -mm. You are severely deceived if you actually think that you are right with God. Because what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23? Oh, and by the way, I never believed that Trump was a real Christian. He made it clear. He said that he never repented, which is an essential part of the gospel. And so his behavior in his personal life was, you know, pretty nasty. Um, but... He knew, he knew the people that his voters, he knew his supporters. So because of that, he was favoring conservative agendas. And so for the real Christian that's consistent with his own theology, his own profession of faith, um, a real Christian could not vote for liberal ideologies. But look what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name 
and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles, and then, <clears throat> and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Leave me, you who practice lawlessness. So what do we see here? We see a picture of many people um, coming to Jesus on that day. People who looked like Christians, people who did good works, churchgoers, Bible readers, um, people who called Jesus Lord, who claimed to prophesy in his name, pe people who claimed to cast out demons and do good works, okay? People who did good works and believed in Jesus. But according to Jesus, you can believe in Jesus and do all kinds of good works, but still you're going to go to hell, according to what Jesus taught. And what did Jesus say about hell? He said it's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, eternal punishment, where the worm never dies, where the fire is never quenched, outer darkness. Those are Jesus' words. Just read the New Testament. That's what Jesus said about hell. And so we have um, scriptures in Galatians 1, where it teaches a distorted gospel, even though it might have some elements of truth in it. A distorted gospel is a, not a gospel that saves and so we need to get the essentials right. And I'm telling you, it is dangerous. It is heresy. Critical race theory to um, take what the Bible says is sin and then tell one group of people, you're not committing this and this is not sin. We're redefining what this is. This is poison. This is putrid. This is what is causing so much racism in the world. Biblically speaking, there's no way that you can look at it any, in any other way if you're doing exegesis, not eisegesis. So, I, um, uh, there's um, the, one, uh, someone who I listen to who is, has been um, the biggest influence on me in my Christian life. Um, Dr. James White from Alpha and Omega Ministries, he has a podcast on YouTube called The Dividing Line. And um, he's been uh, dealing with this sort of thing a lot. He's been... Um, refuting the arguments um, from um, uh, people who are uh, teaching critical race theory, the, the names in the movement. So I, I highly recommend you his um, podcast and his sermons from Apologia Church. They are on, they are on YouTube. I, I didn't plan on going as long as I did, but um, I really hope that... Um, If you can please share this, um, let people know, um, because a lot of horrible things are happening because of this philosophy. Um, there are there are um, big corporations that are indoctrinating their employees to actually believe this stuff. There are pastors on pulpits who are indoctrinating. People sitting in the pews, these are false teachers. Okay, this is not a coming from a white point of view. The early Christian church did not practice their Christianity in how, how critical race theory teaches. It wouldn't be able to function. You had people back then, you had Jews and Gentiles. People, uh, the Jews were persecuted by the Romans, okay? They didn't resort to some nonsense, ridiculous philosophy, 
philosophy like critical race theory is how it how it's taught um, the early church did not function in this way we see this in the pages of scripture and uh, dr white has been very good in um, uh, refuting those who take scriptures out of context to support critical race theory highly recommend you his dividing line uh, podcast it's called dividing line dividing line it's on youtube that's it for now